Okay, finishing up 4.2. Yesterday we practiced solving for y. Yesterday we practiced that. We're on 4.2 on the bottom. We're graphing with a table. Again, this is like playing connect the dots. This problem is a little bit different than the first one we did in, in uh, 4.1. In 4.1, if you remember correctly, in 4.1, they gave us domain. They gave us X values. Sometimes they will give you those domain X values. And other times they just give you the equation right here. The first thing that you have to do to be able to graph is we need to get Y by itself. In this equation right here that we did before, Y was by itself. We had some X values and then it automatically said at the end Y equals a number. That's why you want to get Y by itself. So at the end of it, it will say Y equals some number. The first thing we're going to do is solve for Y. Step one is to solve for Y and then make a table and then graph. How do I solve for Y? What's being done to the Y? It's being, it's being added by a negative 2X. What's the opposite of a negative 2X? So we're going to add 2X to this side. We're going to add 2X to this side. There's my zero pairs, negative 2x and positive 2x. We get y equals, can I combine negative 3 and positive 2x? No, they're not like terms. I can't add x's with numbers. Which one am I going to put first? We put the x first, so positive 2x, and then it says it's a negative 3. We have y equals 2x minus 3. That's the equation that we're going to put into our table. I'm going to come right down here in the middle and put y equals 2x minus 3. We're solving for y. Okay, now you pick your own numbers. And let me just say the kinds of numbers that you should be picking are on both sides of 0. You shouldn't be picking all positive numbers. So I usually just do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Keep it simple. But make sure I'm on both sides of zero. They're spaced out so that I can do some work here. And then we set it up. Our X's are not unknown. We know what the X's are. Our goal is to find the Y's so that we can graph our X, Y points. So we have Y equals 2 times X minus 3. And I'm just going to set all of those up right now. Just going to leave the parentheses blank and go right down through. And I'm just going to set them up. And then I'm going to go back and substitute in those X values. I'm substituting in all my X's. I have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then I'm going to do my number crunching. Everything's set up. What is 2 times negative 2? So we have negative 4, negative 3. Negative 4 and negative 3 equals, we're getting more negative. We're going negative 4, and we're continuing, so that's negative 7. And I'm not going to write my answer there every time, but I did this time, so that way when I look back at my notes, I can see how I got that negative 7. And then I'm going to write my ordered pair. We found that when x was negative 2, we found out that y was negative 7. And then you graph that point negative 2 for x. I'm going to label my axes just to be reminded that this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. I'm going to go to negative 2 for x, and then I'm going to go down to negative 7 for y and put my first point. Two times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 3. What's y equal this time? y equals negative 5. Write my ordered pair. When x was negative 1, we found that y was negative 5. And then graph your ordered pair. Negative 1 for x, negative 5 for y. Keep going, and then you can check back to see how you're doing.
And if you had a point that didn't look like one of your points were off, that's a good tell. Like if I had a point way over here, oh, I got one point that's not on the line. That means you would go back and check your algebra. That's like the visual check. They should all be lining up in a line. And then you just connect them. And you do put arrows on the end because it goes to infinity on both ends. The domain is all the real numbers. It's going to infinity. So we're going to say the domain equals all the reals. That's the symbol for all the reals. Remember your real number system that we just took a test on? Whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, real numbers. It's all real numbers. The line's going to infinity all the way in the x's. And the range, the range is also going to positive and negative infinity. All the reals, because it's reaching out and going up, 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 up. So that would also be all the reals. The domain is all real numbers, and the range is all real numbers. You just put two slashes here and then make an R. That means all real numbers. You don't have to write that this part down every time, but you should write all real numbers. So you know what that's what the R means. Let's look at your homework packets. And the first page should look like function tables. It should look like this. We're going to be in this packet for a while. We're not trying to finish it all in one day. So number one, we have y equals negative x minus 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's five of them. So I'm going to put negative and then the parenthesis. Notice that that negative is in front of the x. So it's going to be negative parenthesis. So a negative out front of an X, we need to make sure we're very careful about that negative. What do you think the negative sign is going to do to the X's? It's going to change the sign. So if it's negative, it's going to become positive. If it's, if it's positive, it will become negative. So a negative being multiplied to something, the best answer to say it's going to change the sign of it. So what do we have? We have negative 7, negative 5, negative 3, negative 2, and 0. And then you just start simplifying. A negative times a negative. What's a negative times a negative seven? Negative 